I want to talk for a few minutes about my tarp. I realize that I'm a bit of an unusual backpacker in that when I backpack, I don't usually use a tent and I don't usually use a hammock either. Instead, I use an eight and a half foot flat square tarp. How and why I use a tarp is today's topic. The first time I saw someone backpacking with a tarp, I felt so bad for that guy sleeping under that tiny piece of nylon or whatever it was that I wanted to offer him some kind of help. That's my own tarp setup you're looking at now. Now I use a tarp myself almost exclusively. I used a tarp on my two long through hikes, for example, the Bent Mackay Trail and the Sheltoe Trace. I also plan on using a tarp on my AT through hike in April. In my backpacking videos, I usually film my tarp setup each night. Here's an example from my last Sheltoe Trace video. I set up for the rain again because it's supposed to rain tonight, and if my shin cooperates tomorrow, and I do the last 22 miles, this is gonna be my final setup of the trip. I'm happy about that. This is just a kind of a diamond formation with my hiking poles on the inside and it's tied up in the back to that tree. The tarp I use is an eight and a half foot square tarp by Hyperlite Mountain Gear. It weighs about 9 ounces without the ties and the stakes. But my tarp doesn't stand alone. It's part of a system that's unique to my own personal style of tarp backpacking. Besides the tarp, the second part of the system is my bivy sack. In this clip, you get a pretty good look at my bivy sack. I use a super light bivy by Mountain Laurel Designs. The sleeping bag in this clip is red, and the bivy is what's around the sleeping bag. The bivy sack answers a frequent question that I get, how do I deal with bugs when I'm out in the open? Well, at the front of the bivy sack, there's a net, netting, that goes over my head and I can zip it up if I want to. That netting lays on my face, which doesn't bother me, but I can also raise it up with a line if I want to do that. Now, in April, when I go on the AT, I'm going to switch at some point to a different bivy sack, a bug bivy by Mountain Laurel Designs that weighs a little bit less than the one I have now. I think it weighs 6.5 ounces. That can also serve as a standalone shelter if I want. If it's not going to rain, I can set that up and then I have netting all around me and I get a little bit more room to move. Another part of my system is an umbrella. An umbrella isn't essential, but I set up in the rain knowing that I have it. I stake it down so it doesn't blow away. I've been in some pretty big storms in the tarp and I've never gotten wet. I'll show you a few examples. The first example is from Big South Fork. I'm not using an umbrella in this example because I have the tarp set up in a way that it's pretty close to the ground all the way around. The music that you'll hear is in the original video. Here's the tarp design for night three with the front there that lowers down to the ground once I'm in. It's supposed to be thunderstorms possibly or if not just a lot of rain with temperatures dipping down below freezing. Wanted to make sure I was secure. If there's wind and snow, we'll see. Big scary thunderstorm going on. Here's the view inside the tarp. I think maybe, I think maybe I'd rather be someplace else, but as long as I'm here, it's pretty exciting. The wind hasn't even started picking up yet. There was some lightning just now. Lightning is striking all around us. In the second example, also from Big South Fork, but on a different trip, you see a clear separation between the wet part of the ground outside the tarp and the dry part on the inside. 6.30 in the morning inside the tarp. It's been raining steadily like this since about midnight. I'm dry inside the tarp. That's outside. I brought the front of the tarp down overnight wet outside but on the inside 
it's all very dry. Dry over there. Dry down by my feet. Over here, I was a little bit worried about water, but it's dry here too, so all in all, I think it was a success. Site selection is important, of course, for the rain. I try to think about what the water is going to do if it does rain, whether there's good drainage or not. I also try to sleep on ground that will soak up the water well, for example, on leaves. Finally, there's the floor of my system. I use a small piece of Reflectix building material that I've talked about in a lot of my videos. And on top of that, uh, ground cloth, either Tyvek in the past, and now I have more of a Cuban fiber ground cloth. Maybe at some point I'll do away with one of those two pieces, or maybe both of them, because the bivy sack also has a floor, but for now I have all three pieces. I've never had a situation where there's uh, leakage like you get in a tent between the wall and the floor. Any water seeping in there, because the floor is actually separate from the walls of the tarp, so the water never reaches me. In the past, trekking poles are also part of my system. Now that I'm not using trekking poles anymore, I just substitute sticks or set up with trees. The sticks can be used on the outside of the tarp or on the inside of the tarp to prop the walls up. Okay, so I've talked about two of the big negatives that people perceive about tarps. That's rain and bugs. Now let me talk about some of the positives. Okay, number one, a basic setup is quick and easy. Here's a video of me setting up a basic shelter in under two minutes, and I wasn't even trying to hurry. The quick setup means I can use the tarp at any time during the day to get out of the rain or the wind or the sun. I'll let this setup video continue to roll. Number two, in a tarp, although I'm protected from the rain and the wind, I still feel like I'm out in the open and I can see what's going on around me. I don't have to guess, for example, what kind of animal is making a particular sound. I can just look out. Third, I have a much wider selection of camping choices with a tarp. I can camp almost anywhere. I can walk off into the woods. I need only a very small flat spot, just as big as my back, and I can set up the tarp around that spot. Fourth point, related to the third point, if I'm worried about falling trees, I can set up near a blowdown, which gives me a little additional safety as long as the falling object I guess a tree, in most cases, falls roughly perpendicular to where I'm sleeping. Here are a few examples of setups among blowdowns. Here I am in the Smokies, set up next to a big log. I have both the outside view and the inside view. Here on the Benton Mackay Trail, there was a storm coming when I was trapped up on a ridge and I set up a tarp among blowdowns to give me a little additional safety from falling trees. And I also did a whole video with a long section on this kind of a setup near a blowdown. This particular video was filmed in Big South Fork. Fifth point, tarps have a lot of room. Six, tarps are easier to set up and take down in the rain, in my opinion, than either hammocks or tents. Number seven, tarps are lightweight. Number eight, since the floor is separate, from the walls of the tarp. It's easy to set up without a tarp at all. I just sleep on the ground, which is really my preferred method of camping if there's no rain. What I do is just use the floor, my sleeping bag, my bivy sack, and no tarp at all, and I'm sleeping right out in the open, and that is a good way to camp, in my opinion. A well-known tarp camper is Ray Jardine. Here is a look at a couple of his books. You can buy these if you're interested in learning more about tarp camping. Now, according to Ray Jardine, a tarp is warmer than a tent because a tent will trap moisture from your body and from your breath. And that trapped moisture inside the tent will reduce the insulation abilities of your sleeping bag or your quilt. He also points out, and I agree with this, that condensation is never a problem in a tarp as long as you set up with enough space around the outside of the tarp to allow for good ventilation. I've definitely found that to be the case. Another point that Ray Jardine often makes is that it's much easier to cook inside of a tarp than it is in a tent. As for me, right now, I'm not cooking, so it doesn't really matter whether or not I can cook in my tarp or not. A final big question is what about snakes? Many people seem to be worried about snakes when it comes to tarps. Snakes are just not an issue. 
A snake realizes that you're a much bigger animal than it is and it's not interested in eating you. It's no more likely to try to share your tarp overnight than is a raccoon or a deer. You just don't need to worry about snakes. And if I'm wrong about that, I'll be the first to let you know. So while I show you some other tarp setups from some of my other backpacking videos, let me sum up why I prefer a tarp to a tent or a hammock. I should say I own both tents and hammocks and use them from time to time. However, I do prefer a tarp. I'm outside, so I feel more like I'm camping. I have more space and freedom in a tarp. I'm able to deal with the rain more easily, in my opinion. There are hundreds of ways to set up a tarp, which makes it kind of fun to use. And in a tarp, I sleep better. If I have just a little time to spend finding a good site, I sleep almost as comfortably in a tarp as I do in a bed, even without using a sleeping pad, believe it or not. So I hope that answers all of your questions about tarps. If you're interested in getting involved in backpacking with a tarp, what I would suggest that you do is buy something inexpensive, an inexpensive tarp, and spend a lot of time in your backyard practicing different ways of setting it up. Then when you go out for the first time backpacking with a tarp, take a tent as well, and you can fall back on your tent if you're uncomfortable in the tarp. There's definitely a learning curve to a tarp. So coming up on my channel, I head out on the Appalachian Trail on April 21st, but before that I'm going to go down to Springer Mountain for another separate backpacking trip. I'm going to do the Georgia Loop, which is supposedly the hardest trail in Georgia. I guess I'm going to find out, and I'll have a full report on that. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.